765 travelers are under self-quarantine, of which 456 have completed the mandatory 14 days of self-quarantine. So far, samples from 20 persons who presented with signs and symptoms similar to that of COVID-19 have been tested and all tested negative. Uganda remains at high risk of importation of COVID-19 from the affected countries. And this is mainly due to travel, trade, and social linkages with the affected countries as Uganda maintains an open border policy. In order to reduce the risk of importation of COVID-19, the Ministry of Health is undertaking the following measures. One is screening of all passengers entering through Entebbe International Airport and other points of entry which include Busia, Malaba, Chanika, and Electro. Two, all travelers from the COVID-19 affected countries are required to undergo mandatory self-quarantine for 14 days. To further strengthen the prevention measures, the government of Uganda has reviewed the evolution of the outbreak in the affected countries outside China, categorized them, and recommend several measures for the different categories. Three criteria were used to rank countries. The criteria were weighed based on their importance in assessing the risk of importation from affected countries. Criteria number one was total number of cases, that is the cumulative number of cases. The higher the number of cumulative cases, the higher the chances of exportation of COVID-19 cases. Number two was the number of cases in the last 24 hours. As many of you are aware, the updates continue to come and some countries increase the cases. This is a measure of active transmission of COVID-19 in the countries. Number three is exponential increase in cases in the last seven days. Those are those that have doubled or tripled. This is an indication of community transmission of COVID-19. This was measured indirectly by the percentage increase in the number of cases in the last seven days. The countries that had cumulative number of cases of more than 100 or had more than 10 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, total 19. And these were ranked using the above criteria and scoring. Category one, people residing in the following seven countries, Italy, Iran, South Korea, France, China, Germany, and Spain should consider postponing non-essential travel to Uganda. To any traveler from these countries, including Ugandan nationals, will be subjected to self-quarantine for 14 days on arrival to Uganda, even if they do not exhibit symptoms of COVID-19. Additionally, individuals highlighted in this category one who insist on visiting Uganda will be subjected to self-isolation or institutional isolation at their own cost. Category two, for the following countries, United Kingdom, Switzerland, Norway, Netherlands, Sweden, Belgium, India, and United States of America, the Ministry of Health will observe the travelers very closely and the evolution of the outbreak in these countries and advise on any restrictions in the coming weeks. Category three, the rest of the countries will undergo the routine screening upon arrival and be advised accordingly on the measures to undertake while in the country to prevent infection and where to report if not feeling well. This analysis will be reviewed weekly and the travel advisory updated accordingly. Any of the above countries that successfully contain the outbreak will be removed from this list after 14 days with no new cases. Advisory on postponement of international meetings and conferences. The Ministry of Health would like to inform the general public that all international conferences slated to take place in Uganda 
have temporarily been postponed due to the looming threat of COVID-19. This decision was reached following extensive consultations with key experts from the Ministry of Health, Uganda, and partners like WHO and the US CDC, coupled with the latest available evidence. The experts assessed the risk of global meetings on the importation and spread of COVID-19 in Uganda as very high due to the following reasons. Number one, this being a new virus, there is no immunity in the population. So the majority of the population are vulnerable. Number two, the international events will bring people from many of the already affected countries. Number three, it is challenging, if not impossible, to avoid crowding and congestion during such large meetings. Additionally, the United Nations has postponed a number of planned international events. Given the above evidence, the Ministry of Health thus recommends that international meetings and conferences in Uganda should be postponed to a later date subject to the COVID-19 evolution and risk assessment. To this effect, our last international meeting will be the one taking place on Monday, where the countries in category one will not attend. Furthermore, the Ministry of Health has developed guidelines for mass gatherings that the public should adhere to. I will now go to the mass gatherings. The Ministry of Health defines mass gatherings as concentration of people at a specific location for a specific purpose over a set period of time. There is ample evidence that mass gatherings can increase the risk of transmission of infectious diseases such as COVID-19. Mass gathering events include one, sporting events, e.g. football matches and bettings. Two, religious events as, for example, prayer congregations crusades, pilgrimages. Three, social or cultural events like funerals and weddings. Four, political events like rallies, campaigns, and national events. All organizers of mass events must make adequate preparations before hosting an event to protect the participants from contracting COVID-19 as stipulated below. Number one, the organizers should designate a competent person to liaise with the health authorities for advice during organization of events. Number two, ensure provision of adequate hand washing facilities with soap and water or alcohol-based hand wrap. Number three, people with flu-like symptoms and who are unwell should stay at home in well-ventilated rooms and should not be allowed to access premises of the gatherings. Number four, organizers should plan for cleaning and disinfecting frequently used communal places like the bathrooms and toilet surfaces and frequently touch surfaces such as door knobs, handles, car doors, and elevator buttons with disinfectant or soap. Number five, Organizers should provide adequate waste management facilities like dust bins, cans, bin liners, and single-use tissues, and properly protected or trained waste handlers. Number six, provide information on prevention of COVID-19 to participants. So the do's and don'ts that we have distributed should be distributed at these mass gatherings. The following mandatory facilities must be in place at all mass gathering sites. Number one, toilets or latrines, one stands for every 20 participants. Number two, hand washing facilities, running water and soap or alcohol hand wraps. Number three, waste management facilities. Number four, adequate ventilation with proper air circulation. Number five, at least five infrared thermo thermometers for temperature screening. So all participants going for a mass gathering must be screened. Number six, a health desk 
with health workers to monitor the health safety standards, follow the guidelines of healthcare workers at all times. Number seven, access to evacuation facilities for sick participants like ambulances. So at all mass gatherings, we expect evacuation facilities to be available. Number eight, first aid kits. The Ministry of Health continues to emphasize the following preventive measures. Avoid handshaking and hugging at all times. Avoid close contact with people who are visibly sick with flu-like symptoms, flu, fever, cough, and sneeze. When sick with flu-like symptoms, avoid going to public places, offices, and public gatherings. Remain at home to avoid infecting others. Number four, you do not need to wear medical masks if you do not have respiratory symptoms such as cough, sneeze, or running nose. Number five, do not take self-medication such as antibiotics. Six, do not spit in public. Find a secluded place like a toilet or a big latrine in which to speak. To speak. Number seven, delay travel to countries that currently have many patients with COVID-19. If you must travel, please follow the protective measures. Lastly, avoid travel if you have flu-like symptoms. The Ministry of Health would like to caution the general public from spreading false rumors and misinformation. Always verify information from the Ministry of Health to avoid spreading false rumors which may cause unnecessary anxiety and stampede. The public is also advised to report any suspected cases to the nearest health facility or call our toll free lines on 0800-203033 and 0800-100-006 or the following officers, Mr. Ted Kajirita, who is the incident manager for COVID-19, on telephone number 0782-909-153 or Dr. Alan Muruta on 0772-460-297. Thank you for listening.